So my name is uh, Ilko Xiaodong. I work for uh, Red Hat. I'm a software engineer in the networking team. Uh, so I work on everything networking on uh, Red Hat products. Um, I was just been asked two hours ago if I could do a presentation. So I um, took some slides that were available on the Red Hat Summit. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, hardware offload and why we think it's something that we need in the future um, for our customers, or basically our customers need it, and we try to integrate it. Um, I try to find this slide. It uh, sort of shows the current uh, options if we look at the uh, Open vSwitch, which we use quite a lot in our product line. Um, so you can have it with the kernel data path, uh, either um, directly or with a, a, with a smart NIC. Uh, doing some offload. Um, then you can have, of course, have the DPDK. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more uh, on the next slide. And then we have the SRIOV solution, where you directly um, attach the virtual machines to the uh, to the network interface. Um, and this is uh, a solution that gives you performance, but it's also a solution that a lot of people want to move away from uh, because you lack the ability to actually move out. Um, and have redundancy, so you can move to a different uh, virtual machine. You can move your virtual machine to a different uh, machine um, because you have it tied in with the SRIOV. Um, so, what are, what is our uh, approach basically for the DPDK? Um, DPDK, we see a lot of more performance than with the kernel data path, um, and we see that it's uh, getting uh, to a stage where we can have at least uh, roughly 10 gig with a decent amount of CPUs. Um, and zero packet loss, so roughly we get about 13 million packets per second with zero packet loss. Basically, we leave the setup running for a couple of, a couple of days, and we see how many packets we dropped. Um, if it's zero packet loss, we, we, uh, if it's not zero, we throttle down until we find uh, the best uh, rate. Um, the experimental tag has been removed from the DPDK, so we can finally start using it as a sort of uh, solution for this. Um, it has all the features that uh, most of uh, the kernel data path has as well. Um, and then if we take a look at what uh, performance we get, uh, this graph shows the 10 uh, gig performance uh, with the amount of CPU cores it will take. Um, the blue bar is the DPDK one uh, versus the kernel, which needs uh, a lot more cores. Um, if you see from the kernel data path, we need at least 16 cores uh, to process the packets that come in at wire speed 10G. Um, and we need about five cores um, for 64 byte packets uh, that you see. Um, so this is with 10 gig. So what if you try to scale up to the 25, 40, or 50 gig? Basically, it's almost impossible with the number of cores that you have. Um, we try to do, or at least I try to do on a machine, uh, one of the most powerful machines we have. I try to uh, saturate the 40 gig with 64 byte packets, and that's not getting even close. It's roughly 50% that I can get uh, of the link filled up. Um, so what we really need is some hardware offload uh, solution uh, for that. We see different vendors uh, that we try to work with to get their solution integrated. Um, and then um, from a Red Hat perspective, we have our uh, open, open, uh, open source upstream first policy. So what we really want to do is um, if we accept any of the drivers uh, for that, it needs to be upstreamed because we do not take any private code into our kernel. Uh, it needs to be an upstream version first. Um, um, we try to integrate it with our layered product solutions, which basically are the open shift, open stack type of uh, solution. Um, and we, we don't want the vendor lock-in. At least that's our goal. So you can uh, try to change whatever vendor you have on it. Um, the next couple of slides are a couple of slides showing the performance um, against um, hardware offload versus non-hardware offload in percentage. Um, so we try to test layer two and layer three offloading uh, because uh, in our test what we do is we either change only the layer two header or we only change the layer three header in that perspective. So basically the null line here is um, the kernel data path that we choose in this comparison. Um, and you can see that even on the small packets, I think this is not the final graph. There is a better graph that actually shows you the line rate. So when you're, there's a line where you see you hit the line rate or not. Unfortunately, I don't have it on this one. Uh, but you can see uh, how many times better it performs compared to the, the, uh, the normal solution. 
when you see for the 64 uh, byte packets, the upload goes really high. So about four and a half thousand percent uh, better throughput on it. Um, CPU utilization, what we try here is to compare the CPU utilization. Uh, so you can see to get the results on the non-hardware -up upload, you need quite a lot of cores. Um, these numbers include the virtual machine. So what we do, we loop everything on the virtual machine as well uh, back uh, as one core. So that's also yeah, taken into this graph. Um, and we have another partner that shows a little bit less uh, performance, but still about 600, 500 to 600% performance. Um, and the CPU utilization is roughly the same. So we really see that uh, the hardware upload is really something that we need to uh, work towards to save the cores, uh, at least from your normal uh, uh, virtual machine. So you can still have all your cores in your virtual machines, and then you can still use your, um, uh, sorry, you use it for all your virtual machines, but then your uploading is done by the cores on the, uh, the hardware blades. Um, I think this is all the slides I have, so I'll turn it better to other stuff. So that's it. I need, I need to probably also plug, I just re recently, there is a blog that tells how we do these tests. So if you go to developers.redhat.com, uh, you can find a blog where we do some more in-depth uh, explanation on how the tests were run. Okay, that's it.